But, yeah. Spoiler alert, none of them found him. Like, there's one woman that stood next to him for like a minute out of this seven minutes. And she walked away. I'm like, and you dare to call all yourselves psychics. That's just ridiculous. Wow. I mean, and I don't know about you. Just kind of, to kind of go off the beaten path a little bit. Not really, because it's still dealing with psychics and being sensitive. But this year, I don't know what it is. And every single person that I've talked to who is sensitive agrees with me. But this year... It's, like, really thick. Like, the energy and the spiritual activity is so high right now. Well, after having my shadow person woo-woo moment the other week, yep. Yeah, because you usually don't have anything. Like, we actually sat down you know, a while back and had a discussion of any... Uh, activity that you'd had and you, you hadn't had any kind of experience so you see it too well you know the the one only one other thing was having my mobile phone turn itself on and nobody was near it i wasn't near it the kid was at school hubby was at work and it turned itself on on the coffee table i'm like <gasps> okay we'll just leave the room and pretend nothing happened <laughs> We'll just walk away from that one. That, you're not going to touch that with a 10-foot barge pole. So. <laughs> but I don't know. It's just everything is just so heavy and thick. And ah, oh, right now it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And everyone feels it. And as far as I can tell, and I mean, I've been sensitive all my life, but I've, I didn't really get into it until I was about uh, 14 maybe. But this has probably got to be the most active Halloween season that I've ever experienced in my life. Well, we'll have to see what happens. <laughs> Alrighty, should we get on to our stories? Yes, let's see. Let's skip some of them, because some of them aren't actually really all that interesting. Alrighty, well I'll let's let see. you lead, and, and I'll just uh- follow. Alrighty, I'm going to start a little ways down, and then you can pick whichever one you want. How about that? I know which one you're going to pick. Oh, really? Yes. Which one am I going to pick? Well, let's see if I'm right. <laughs> well, that's not fair, because if I, if I start reading it, and then you'll be like, Aha, I was right, and you really weren't. <laughs> no, I'll be honest. I'll be, cross my heart. <laughs> okay, everyone, anyone out there that is psychic or empath, if you if you can tell that she's lying, <laughs> right in the let chat me know. <laughs> because then, I'll, if, if she does lie, then I will take some other embarrassing sound clip and I will, <laughs> I'll do something. Don't tell them that, they'll lie just to get you to do it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn, you caught on to my plans. <laughs> Alrighty, so the one that I picked was... Brooklyn performance artist to give birth before audience in gallery. Okay, that's not the one I was going to be. Yep, go. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> this may be one of the most amazing debuts the art world has ever seen. A pregnant Brooklyn performance artist is planning to have her baby in an art gallery in front of an audience as part of a piece examining childbirth. Called The Baby, the Birth of Baby X, the performance will feature artist Marnie Kotak, turning Bushwick's mi- microscope, wait, microscope, sorry, gallery into her birthing room while she will spend each day until the baby comes. I hope that people will see that human life itself is the most profound work of art and that therefore giving birth, the greatest expression of life, is the highest form of art. Kotak is due sometime in the next five weeks. Visitors to the Charles Place Gallery where the birth of baby X starts today which was October 8th, are warned that the baby may be born at any moment. I have decided to do this because I want to show people that, as in my previous performances, real life is the best performance art. Kotak has said she is mentally prepared to give birth with the art world looking on. I wouldn't say that I'm scared to do this because I have a good support team, my midwife, doula, and wonderful husband. Of course, I am a bit nervous about the whole process of giving birth, 
as you should be, and having a child. And like every mother, I hope that everything goes smoothly. But I am no more worried that, than I would be if I were having the baby at home or in a hospital. This isn't the first shocking performance from Kotak, whose resume includes stage reenactment of her own birth, attending her grandfather's funeral, and losing her virginity in a blue Plymouth, according to the gallery. Until the actual delivery occurs, visitors can watch other works by Kotak related to her pregnancy, including videos in which she films the audience at a summer festival and projects their faces onto her belly. Okay. With the birth of Baby X, the gallery said on its website, Kotak continues to present her life exp experiences as works of art, works in which she strives to avoid the spectacle often involved in performance art to reach what is real. The baby will be the first for Kotak. When the bundle of joy comes, she will be, be as surprised as anyone. We still aren't sure of the baby's gender, and my due date is a bit uncertain. What's next for Kotak? A work called Raising Baby X, of course, in which she will presumably turn crying fit, poopy diapers, and sleepless nights into art. She will recontextualize the everyday act of raising a child into a work of performance art, the gallery said. Oh my god, that's all I have to say. Um... Is the government paying for this? Uh, probably. Because this is almost as as good as the guy who did a big poo in a in a perspex box. Hmm. You know, you could say that's just just as you know real life. I mean, not comparing her giving birth to a poo, but you know, it's just like people don't really need to see that. Well, I don't know, because uh, after I gave birth, I've been constipated for, like, six months. <laughs> like birth. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I don't know. You see, I'm, I'm sort of sitting there, I'm thinking, the only people that are really going to be there are a bunch of sadistic women that just want to see someone go through that crap. Perverts who just want to see some, and perhaps some medical students that you know it's like extracurricular study. Because I don't think there'd be just any old average Joe Blows just standing there watching some woman puff and pant and eventually expel a human being from her body. I mean, you know coming from someone who delivered naturally. It's really gross. It really is. There is nothing beautiful about the process of birth. The only thing that is beautiful is after that baby is cleaned up and you hear it cry for the first time. Yeah. That's it! <laughs> after after and that, it's all... For the it's... first time. That's it! Yeah. <laughs> mm, okay. Uh, will I read that one? Yes, you will. Yeah, whatever. It goes along the same lines, just in an earlier stage. <laughs> <laughs> APD. Semen found in store yogurt sample from October 6th. <laughs> As I said, same thing, slightly different process. Yes, you have Robin to thank for um, both of those stories, actually. Yeah, thanks, Robin. You know, I've just had <laughs> breakfast and everything, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> you know, I honestly think, you know, we have such wonderful friends. We do. Janie, mm -hmm. Robin. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they go out. You know, when I told them that we read weird articles, I think it is their goal now to go out and find every weird thing that no human being would ever possibly read out loud. And give it to us. And go, hey, read this. Put it on YouTube so everybody hears it. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, so this is from Albuquerque. Woohoo. <sighs> okay. A customer at Albuquerque Supermarket insisted last week that there was something gross in a yogurt sample an employee gave her while she was shopping uh, mm. the yogurt. Um, turns out <laughs> she was right. An Albuquerque police source said a Greek yogurt sample a Sunflower Market employee handed a customer was tainted with that stuff. 
I'm not saying it. I've just had breakfast. It's making me want to gag already. I completely think it's disgusting, one customer said. Foul beyond words, said another customer, said walking out of the supermarket on Corral's Road. Corral is? I don't know. Anyway. And Alameda in northwest Albuquerque Friday night. Police got the test results earlier this week and told News 13 on Friday the yogurt handed out by Anthony Garcia, 31, during his shift at the supermarket did in fact have that stuff in it. Albuquerque, uh, Albuquerque, absolutely disgusting. There is no way to justify that on any level, customer Keith Powell said. The woman who filed the complaint said two employees at Sunflower were pointing at her when she was shopping with her daughter last week. According to a police report, she said soon after Garcia was approached, uh, Garcia approached her in the cereal aisle offering up a Greek yogurt sample. The woman tried the yogurt, spit it out and called police. She told police it was gross and tasted like that. Police collected and tested the sample the woman spit out. According to the police report, the store manager said she was not aware that any of her employees were sampling items on the sales floor that day. Oh. <laughs> I don't know whether I can read the rest of that. 